We put them in the box. We forget what he's done for us. If you think about what he has done for you in the past, those times when he could have took you out, but that grace and mercy, Jesus at the right hand of the Father, making intercessory for you and me. The times when we were lost, undone, bound for hell. And God said, I'm taking them out. So I can imagine Jesus saying, no, Daddy, no, Daddy, we got more plans for Thomas. We got more plans for Daddy. We got more plans for me. We got more plans for Rita. But, 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 but there's a purpose, Daddy. There's a purpose, Daddy, not today. At that time when you were in your car, in that car and the truck came over, and they saw how miraculously Would you there say amen? amen? If you're 
cannot say oh my. Okay, let's all stay for the reading of the word. Let's get to the next slide. Here it is. Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19. Y'all are going to have to continue. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. <laughs> Behold, I will do a new thing, and it shall spring forth, and ye not shall ye not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Let's read that again. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold. God saying this, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now let that sink in. He will even make a way in the wilderness and even the rivers and put rivers in the desert. Shut your hands for Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray you anoint me from my head to my feet. Father, I pray you anoint me from my head and Father, I pray that this word will pierce our, our spirit, pierce our ears to know that you're doing a new thing for us. And Father, I pray that we walk in the new thing. And Father, I pray that anybody needs a touch from you this morning, that they will get it. Father, I pray if someone needs a healing touch, they will get it. Father, I pray if someone needs to repent and come back to you, that they'll do it this morning. Father, I pray right now this word will just prick the hearts of us and we will depart to serve you. Signs, 
wonders, miracles, deliverance. Amen. The greatest miracle in signs and wonders is when you put sin to death. When you get to the mat and say, I ain't doing it no more. That's the greatest signs, wonders, and miracles. What I love about this story, I gotta give you, gotta give you a backstory. This is Isaiah. He's talking to the children of Israel about disobedience towards God. But he's giving them some encouragement. Have you been there? Have you been going through some stuff and you need some encouragement? You see, the children of Israel, they just came out of the wilderness. It took them 40 years to take a three-day turn. It took them 40 years. They come out of the wilderness and they go to Babylonian slavery. I don't know about you. You go from one bad thing to another bad thing. You get kind of beat up and disgusted. Amen. You get discouraged. But pretty much the reason why they were going through that is because of their disobedience to God. And see, now, if you read through the Bible, the children of Israel, they went through first, second kings, and judges. If you read through that, that's pure chaos. That is pure chaos. Hello. It looks like today's world. We're in pure chaos right now. And right here, Isaiah, he's encouraging the children of Israel. He's saying, God's going to redeem you. God's going to save you. God's going to make a way. God's going to do something for you. I know that's good news. When you're going beat up and disgusted and someone comes to you and says, God, they've got a plan for you. God's going to redeem you. You might have turned from your wicked way. You might have got twisted up a little bit. But God's going to redeem you. He still has a plan for you. He's going to deliver you. Amen. That's good news. I want to stand on that. God's going to deliver us. He's going to deliver us from what's going on right now in this nation and what's going on. But right here, verse 18, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Huh. We're bad about considering things of old, ain't we? Yeah. Now, I want to remind you of a story. If you read through the Bible and you go to Ezra chapter 3, it's a good read. I'm going to give you a little cliff notes. Ezra chapter 3, remember the things of the old. You have to understand the children of Israel, they're about to they're rebuilding the temple. It's been destroyed. The rebuilding. And all they have is the foundation. That's all they have. They have the foundation that is built. The temple is being rebuilt. I don't know about you. When something gets rebuilt, you get kind of happy about it. You get excited about it, right? The Bible says that there was, there was shouting and weeping, but you couldn't tell the difference. Because what happened was, they put the new foundation, the older folks, they were weeping. Well, it's not as grand as it used to be. It's not as big. The footprint's not as big. The foundation is not as big. It's not going to be as grand. They're not going to have ivory, ivory walls. They're not going to have the tapestry. They're not going to have the, the carpet that we used to have. And then the young ones, they didn't even know the temple. They just said, hey, we're happy we got a temple. But they're like, hey, we're excited. We got a temple. We got somewhere we can go. We can praise the Lord. But they missed it. Because they were looking at things of the past and things of the future too far. That's how we miss God sometimes. We look at the past and we miss God. Because we will always we have those hurts, those angers, those things that, that, that even our failures, we look at the past and it hinders us. And then we look too far in the future, we're thinking too far, and then guess what? We miss it. See what happens. That happens in today's church. Whoa. That happens in today's church because we have folks that are very picky about how things go. We get called the traditional. Traditional thought. We get called we get called thinking about, well, that's how it used to be done. We get called with that because they're like, well. The music, it's too worldly, it's too contemporary, I'm not going to worship. I'm just going to sit here with my arms folded, I don't want nothing to do with it. But they have the other ones. They're saying, hey, we're going to give them a little funny something to, to, to look at. We're going we're to take that tradition, we're going to throw it down the drain, and we're going to do our thing. We still miss it. Listen, God ordains certain things. Amen? God ordains worship. Whether you like it or not, he ordains that worship. If God calls for an angel to be played, to usher in the presence, guess what we need to do? 
We need to get up into it. We need to get up into it and get the presence. If God ordains a sick heart or something, that is ordained by God. He wants what he wants. And now listen, I don't know about you, but when you go to a restaurant and you order something, you don't get what you want, do you go back? That's why we need to quit looking at the past. 
you remember when you first got saved? You were so on fire. You wanted to tell everybody, let me tell you what happened on such and such night. Let me tell you what happened in church. Do you remember being so excited, wanting to come to church and hear the word and be in the presence? Do you remember being so excited, going in your prayer closet, being locked up for hours at a time? Do you remember being so excited, reading the word and saying, oh, check that out. Oh, look at that. Then come on your friends and say, man, I read in the Bible. They did this and they did that. And you start reading yeah. these stories. Yeah. Do you remember that time? Do you remember Do you remember the time that you wanted to live a life pleasing to God? Do you remember that time? Do you remember that time? The only number one prince, the only number one thing was being in the presence of God. Do you remember those times? We need to remember those times. We need to remember them. And right here. Here, I get to the meat and potatoes, right here. Right here, verse 19. Behold. Behold. Every time I read this, I get excited. This is God speaking. Behold, I will do a new thing, and it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers and the deserts. Listen, the Lord saying it to us today. Look what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. The whole means to look. God's saying, look what I'm doing. Look, I'm giving the church a new vision. He's saying, look what I'm doing. I'm giving the church a new life. Look what I'm doing. I'm giving you a new life. God's saying, look what I'm doing. I gave you a new song. I'm giving the church a new song. He's saying, look, I'm giving you a new anointing. I'm giving the church a new anointing. He's saying, listen, I'm giving you a new shout. I'm giving you a new dance. God's saying, look, I'm giving you a new beginning. Frustration. 
frustration, confusion, or right now. See, our problem here, we see what the world's doing today. We're divided more than ever. Uh, we're divided on the church end, ministry end. We're divided on the political end. We're divided on racial end. We're divided on every way possible. We are divided. And when we start praying, Lord, when are you going to make a way? Lord, when are you going to do something? Lord, when are you coming back? That's when that doubt and that frustration comes to play. Look what's going on. I'm sure you're looking at frustrated. Why are they not doing that? Why are they doing this? Why are we not even going back to God like he says? We start asking that question. It starts with you. It starts with you. And God does a new thing for me. He does a new thing for you. So listen, when people are doing things that we don't know why they're doing, but God gives them the same grace and mercy, the same blood that saves you, what saves them. And all you got to do is keep doing what you're doing. And now right here, this is where when we get frustrated, because God gives us a promise. He says, when doubt and fear and frustration sets in, he said it right here. I will even make a way in the wilderness. I will even make a way. I will make a rivers in the desert. Did you put that? He will make a way in the wilderness. When there seems there is no way. When it seems to start up. He said, I'm right here in the wilderness with you. I'm right here in the desert with you. I'm going to give you some water. I'm going to give you some shelter. He said, I'm going to give you water and a dry season. He said, I'll be your friend when you're friendless. He said, listen, I'll be your father when you're fatherless. I'll be your mother when you're motherless. He said, I'll be your rock in a ruby land. He said, I'll be your bread when you're hungry. I'll be your water when you're thirsty. I'll be your lily when you're body. I'll be your refuge when you need shelter. He said, I'll be your wheel when I'm being alone with you. He said, I'll be, I'll be your anchor. Say, I have 
two sets of footprints and one set of footprints when he's carrying. And sometimes, even in our disobedience, that good shepherd still loves us. And what the good shepherd does, I'm going to tell you something the shepherd does that not many people talk about. We talk about how he's good to us. You know, he's got that shepherd hook and he protects us. But sometimes when we struggle with that disobedience, when we're like, I, I, got, I got this. When we shake our fist in his face and say, leave me alone, I, I got this. What he does with that little sheep that strays, a shepherd, they get that sheep and they break that leg. They break that leg. Oh, it sounds bad. Why, why would he do that? Because what the shepherd does, when he breaks that leg, he puts you on his shoulder and he walks and he carries you until that leg is healed. But he knows as soon as he puts you down from when that leg's healed, he knows you're not going to go far from the shepherd because you've been with the shepherd. Right. You've laid with the yeah. shepherd. Yeah. You've slept with the shepherd. He's protected yeah. you. You smell like the shepherd. And there's sometimes we go through those, but the Lord still loves us. That's when these promises, He'll make a way in the wilderness. And the wilderness is that this. There's been many times I've been in the wilderness. Some of us have done some wilderness wandering. We call it working on testimony. But I've got good news for you. For the lost loved ones that's out there wilderness wandering, he said, they'll make a way. That gives me some consolation knowing my lost loved ones. He's making a way for them. He made a way for me when I needed him. He made a way for you. And there's something in the middle of the day. He's going to sing. So this morning we close him. Let's all stand. Let's shut our eyes and our hands. By raising hands, say, hey, I. I